The net result was I wasn't getting the benefit of the volt drop and arc suppression, and I welded the points shut on the solenoid. But in uh, the marina in Horta, just when we were leaving the dock, and the boat's doing donuts in the marina. Oh, because you can't turn off your bow thruster. You can't turn off the bow thruster. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert videos here at Boat How To. We're uh, Nigel Calder and Jan Attenstedt, and we answer your questions about boat electrical systems. And now let's go to today's question. I'm adding a bow thruster to my 65 foot sailboat. I have a 24 volt windlass wired with four odd cable and a 100 amp circuit breaker. Can I wire the bow thruster to the same circuit and if so, how? Yes, for sure, and, and that's actually the uh, installation we have on our own boat. And it's also a 24 volt boat, 24 volt windlass, uh, similar kind of draw. But our bow thruster, uh, which would be adequate for this 65 foot boat because it's oversized for our boat, mm -hmm. pulls 700 amps. Uh, 24 volts. I mean, it's a humongous load. So once again, you're looking at really big conductors. And in this case, he's got a four rot, which in uh, metric terms would be 120 millimeter squared, I think. So he could wire to that same battery and have the bow thruster mm -hmm. run off a bit. Uh, it's obviously going to drop the voltage on the battery pretty quickly, but you don't use the bow thruster for more than a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Well, he for sure needs to change his circuit breaker, though. Huh? Oh, he can't wire it through that circuit breaker. Yeah. No, it would have to be a separate circuit. Yeah. He could just use the same battery, mm -hmm. or he or she. I yeah. keep saying he. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. boat owners are mostly male, but um, we kind of would like to advocate to change that. So, yes. yeah. yeah, so it would be essentially a separate circuit wired to the same battery. I mean, you'd be coming off the battery positive posts, probably to a bus bar, mm -hmm. and then you've got the circuit to the windlass yeah. and the 100 amp breaker, and you've got the circuit to the bow thruster, uh, which is going to have, uh, in this case, probably a 500 amp fuse in it. Um, let's say we use the same conductors, 4 volt. Actually, the uh, ampacity of those conductors is about, off the top of my head, I think it's 400 and something amps. It's Yeah, it's not quite uh, 700 amps. So. so it's not. So you're going to probably put in a 500 amp fuse because you won't find like a mm -hmm. 430 amp fuse. But that is a slow blow fuse. Typically, it takes 130% of the fuse rating to get the fuse to blow at all, mm -hmm. even if that's sustained for 10 minutes. So uh, if we have a 500 fuse, that puts us at about six some, something Amps. 100 amps, and it would take 10 minutes of that to get there. Mm -hmm. So it'll handle that four, that 700 amps for a few seconds yeah. without yeah. nuisance blowing. Yeah. But don't run it permanently. <laughs> no, and it will provide that that required protection for that uh, 4 mm -hmm. 120 mil cable. Oh, it's definitely pushing the limits though of, yeah. the, of the installation. Huh? And you'll get some voltage drop through it. But actually that voltage drop is beneficial because it helps to suppress some of the arc that occurs on the okay. solenoids when you trigger the bell thruster. Well, I'm going to look into this actually because that's my next plan to change my yes. my installation for my bell yeah. thruster because right so, now it's running through undersized <laughs> wires. Well, well, that's not such a bad idea because mm -hmm. um, I size my bell thruster for a 3% volt drop. Mm -hmm. I put in huge cables and uh, the net result was I wasn't getting the benefit of the volt drop and arc suppression and I welded the points shut on the solenoid in uh, the marina in Horta, just when we were leaving the dock, and the boat's doing donuts in the marina. Oh, because, because you can't turn off your bow thruster. Can't turn off the bow thruster. Well, luckily, the emergency switch operated and shut the bow thruster down. But if that had welded shut as well, we'd have had to cut the cables. Wow. It would have been the only way to shut the thing down. There are only one or two circuits on the boat where a little bit of voltage drop is in some sense is beneficial, and yeah. that's one of them. Wow, yeah, it's, because normally we try to minimize yeah. voltage drop as yeah. much as yeah. we can, but that's yeah. actually yeah. a yeah. pretty I learned, interesting I learned story. that one the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, I hope I won't repeat this right. bad mistake. With well, and the other thing as well we're throwing in here is if you ever have to use your battery switch as an emergency switch like that, mm. and you have to break a really high current, there will be arcing on the points of the switch when you do that, and it's going to damage the switch. Mm -hmm. So uh, the switches are not designed to be turned off and on under full load. Yeah. They're designed to be turned on with the boat shut down, and then you turn all the circuits on, and then you turn them off, and then you turn it off. So uh, if you ever have to do that, you need to replace the switch, because yeah. mm -hmm. you probably damaged it. Yeah, that's a good point as yeah. well, actually. Yes. Yeah. As you can see, it's not, not that easy, and especially yeah. with these high current installations, there's a lot of yeah. things that can go wrong and that you yeah. need to keep in mind. And actually, if you want to learn how to properly wire your DC systems and learn about this voltage drop, conductor sizing, 
fuses and characteristics, low blow versus fast blow and kind of these things. Check out Boat Electrics 101. That's actually, yeah, we cover all of this in great detail and tell you a lot of good tricks to how to make a safe and reliable system. Check it out and see you soon.